somebody in a homeless shelter said, you should never get on government assistance because it's a drug mm -hmm. and you'll never get off it. And so I started seeing a world on the streets that was very different than the one that the New York Times reported. And it, it caused a certain amount of cognitive dissonance that what I'd been told that the poor were the victims of evil capitalism, what I saw again and again was that they had made very poor decisions and that the big difference in society was one of personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the taboo, I think the greatest taboo in liberal discourse is the refusal to acknowledge the role of behavior in producing personal outcomes. <laughs>
the New York in the late 80s, early 90s was also the dominance, the rise, the meteoric rise of Al Sharpton. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw very <laughs> vicious race politics yes, going yes. on. Uh, so at that point, I think um, there was little left of, of uh, the liberal belief system that I had not seen challenged with my own eyes. As you, as you alluded to earlier, I mean, according to deconstructionism, the self doesn't exist. So mm -hmm. personal responsibility would seem not to follow from right. academic deconstructionism. Right. But you don't blame that. I mean, this is interesting to me. You, you, you have, um, as a secondary cause, the rise of multiculturalism or of ethnic um, liberalism identity liberalism mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so forth and do you uh, is it your view that those are those two events are are not connected or not deeply connected but essentially independent of each other those two developments on the left of of deconstruction and identity politics right well it's actually that's an interesting question and it is quite ironic and i i don't want to get too much into the weeds here but it's very it's it's a twist of history Deconstruction was obsessed with this idea of différence, and this was a linguistic idea for them. They said the fact that the word dog is arbitrarily and is different <laughs> related to the actual entity dog means that we can never have meaning. Well, this is absurd. Right. They actually were fanatics for truth because they had a so exalted a standard for truth that the fact that language was a set of arbitrary signs, which is, it indisputably mm -hmm. is, for them meant, well, then it can never be true. It must always be false. That's ridiculous. But so they had this idea of difference, that, that language was always going to miss its mark. Well, then this idea of difference mm -hmm. was taken up by the multiculturalists and turned into another battle cry, which was ethnic difference, gender difference, and the self, ironically, which had been denied by deconstruction, came back like the return of the oppressed and it all was about the self with a vengeance with a vengeance yeah. and now it's it's difference we have to focus on this notion that you know being gay is so different that you need your own gay studies blah, 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 blah. but it's all narcissism mm -hmm. it's all about the self and to me this is such a betrayal of the humanistic ideal, which in the Renaissance you had, mm -hmm. you had Petrarch, the, the original humanist, writing letters in Latin to the classics, to Cicero and Virgil and Homer, because he wanted to enter their world and he felt like he yes. could talk to them. <clears throat> that was what study was, was escaping the self to enter a different world. Today, and like Frederick Douglass uh, saying something very similar many exactly. hundreds of years later. Yeah. I walk with Shakespeare. Du Bois said, you know, I, I can speak across the color line. Mm. Shakespeare and Alexander Dumas, right. they walk arm in arm with neither condescension nor scorn. And that sense of humanity and being drawn to greatness, not to the petty narrowness of the self, is what the humanity should be. So. It's, it's, deconstruction spawned many enormities, and it is, it is responsible because it, the language, this crabbed, artificial language, uh, has just been transformed. Right. But it's, it is, it's a continuity and a discontinuity. Now, uh, did you have or develop in this period um, an, an intellectual hero or a series of heroes? Um, or political hero, or political heroes, or uh, were you were you on your own in a way in this journey? Uh, I would say intellectual heroes. Again, I I did love speech act theory, but I think it was I was really striving to make journalism clear mm -hmm. and to give people a sense of what it looked like on the streets because. Not everybody has the privilege of being able to right. go and try and research a story and, and go talk to the victims of crime in New York City. So, And what about uh, Rudy Giuliani? Was he, I mean, for a lot of conservatives, uh, especially those in New York um, in those years, uh, Giuliani was important in a way that Reagan was important for a lot more people mm -hmm. around the country as examples of 
um, of reformers who could actually improve the lives of the people they were representing, if, who could get something done and who were not simply singing, joining in the chorus of conservative decline, yes. uh, but who could uh, actually improve the way government worked. Giuliani was an amazing figure, and I am so lucky to be, have been educated by his vision of urban transformation, as you say, Charles. It really was a belief in cities that conservatives are sometimes caricatured as being non-urban, right. which is not true. Um, and the did you, thing about... Did you expect him to, to be successful? You know, I really... Uh, I have not begun from a set of principles. I think when Giuliani came in, I was still learning myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just starting to write and uh, really learned the conservative wisdom completely from the ground up. So I didn't really even have expectations for Giuliani because I was still casting off liberal assumptions about government, big mm -hmm. government, and uh, poverty. But what I did see, and but, but I think again, the core that I've always had is meritocracy. So one of my early articles that Giuliani seized upon, and mm -hmm. I have to say did transform uh, the City University of New York, was writing about the decimation of this large public university system in New York. It's just a city mm -hmm. public university called the City University of New York by the practice of open admissions where they junked their academic requirements in the 1970s in order to diversify. And I wrote that this was trashing the university. We have to have at a bare minimum you should be able to read and write if you want to enter college. <laughs> yes. um, Giuliani had a gut understanding. I remember going to a press conference that he gave after having implemented my suggestions and raised the standards and got rid of open admissions at, at CUNY. And he was asked by a Puerto Rican journalist, well, don't you feel like you're disrespecting, uh, that you're disrespecting right. minority students? And Giuliani totally spontaneously, without any preparation, said, education is not about seeking respect for yourself. It's about learning outside of yourself and breaking the narrowness of your own mm -hmm. of your own identity. Uh, and and he had this gut understanding of again of personal responsibility of the reciprocity mm -hmm. of the government social contract. So he was doing his own version of welfare reform in parallel to the national 96 reform and spoke persuasively and and honestly about okay we are going to help you but you have to help yourself and he was taking baby steps to addressing the big taboo which was family breakdown but then his own marriage was sort of awry and so he backed off at the last minute which was too bad so we had to wait another 20 years mm -hmm. before our next Republican mayor at the end of his term uh, actually took on the issue of teen pregnancy, which is only a small part of family breakdown, but it was better than nothing. Um, but, but yes, Giuliani was an extraordinary transformative figure, and of course his, his most remembered success was in public safety. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that some more.